Welcome back to Warriors Weekly. Now, Basketball 101 with Jim Barnett. It's time for another edition of Basketball 101. And today we're going to bring in a young man who was one heck of a player at Indiana University. And he hit the winning shot in the 1987 game against Syracuse to win the NCAA championship. He also, I just learned recently, had a 42-inch vertical leap. A 42-inch vertical leap. Keith Smart, our top assistant coach, come on in here, please, because a point guard had a 42-inch vertical <laughs> leap, but you can still play the point. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, I want to talk about point guard play today and share with our, our viewers and listeners. Why is it so important to have a point guard? It seems to me the way the Warriors play, they, anybody handles the ball, they throw the ball up the floor. And certainly in my day, people mm -hmm. always used to, would sometimes ask me, well, were you a point guard or a shooting guard? We didn't even have that designation. Mm -hmm. Why is it so significant today? Well, today's game, uh, you have so many players that can score the basketball, that can make plays from any place on the floor. You need that one player on the floor that, that the coach, as a coach, can, can kind of rely on to kind of get the team under control. As players are playing on the floor, sometimes you may not pay attention to a player who's going up and down the floor a couple times that may need the uh, need a touch, need a play call for him. Okay. And maybe the coach uh, is going to give that point guard the freedom to call a play for um, uh, for that particular player. It, and it sounds like to me, listening to you, then someone who can get the game under control, he has to be able to handle the basketball. Is that the first prerequisite in becoming a point guard, being able to handle the basketball mm -hmm. efficiently? Yeah, because uh, people always say, well, he can play the point. And my judge of character always have been uh, when to see a player play the point. When he's pressured, he or she is pressured. Yes. The first thing they do, they do, if they turn their back to the defender, uh -huh. they're not really a point guard yet. But if they can face up the defender, not worrying about uh, his defensive abilities because they have such supreme control over the basketball, that player pretty much is a point guard and moving in that direction of being a good point guard. Well, Keith, we've talked about the assets of a point guard. Let's, let's put this into play and, and kind of simplify this. Mm -hmm. If you could take the ball out, mm -hmm. and one question I think viewers would like to know is, how do you determine, how does the point guard determine when to attack the basket mm -hmm. and when not to attack the basket? If you're, if you're the point guard, what, what do you see when you make a decision to go one-on-one? -on -one? So Jim, you bring up a good point because as a point guard, as we try to teach our point guards, as I move it up the floor, the first thing I'm looking for is the spacing on the floor. Okay. We're looking for space. The next thing, as I bring the ball up into an operating area, I'm looking at where are my outs. If I penetrate in too deep, the defense is going to move toward me. Right. Where are my next plays going to be made? So when a point guard or any guard, mm -hmm. basically any player even, breaks down the defender, mm -hmm. if he can attack the basket and finish, mm -hmm. that's his first objective. Right. And he will only pass the ball if he draws another defender. Right. And most of the time, it's a bigger man coming over, and he's setting up his man, hopefully, for a dunk. That's exactly it. Because you want to have a point guard who can have the ability to make plays and finish at the rim. If he can, if you have, if you have that luxury. But if you, you also want that point guard to be able to get to an area on the floor. Right. And we teach our guys to get to this mid-area of the paint. For a jump shot, you must still be a threat first because teams will play you for the pass, and they will fake at you right. and get back to their primary player. And then you're kind of in no man's land. And you're kind of in no man's land, and as we say growing up, don't ever leave your, your feet to make a pass. When you go up for a pass, uh, for a, a play here, you're looking at a shot, defense helps. I have what we call a drop down pass to a man under the basket. Right. If the defense off the corners help into the paint, you have your next pass out to the wing, into the deep corners. As our viewers know, that's a lot to grasp, a lot to hold on to, but we hope we simplified it enough, and Keith, you did a super job. Thank you for breaking Thank that you. down for us, and hope you have a little more insight into the point guard spot for the Golden State Warriors. We'll see you next time on Basketball 101.